Hello Anna, hello everybody as well. Um, thank you Anna for addressing the balance to um, try and address the balance to the lack of balance in the mainstream media. And also thank you to everybody who sent a video into Anna's channel. Basically, you've all confirmed my own personal research. My name's Roger, I'm 55 years old. I work as a long distance lorry driver and I live in Southampton. I work permanent nights. Um, I wanted to talk about something other than the problems of the world because I want to try and bring a bit of positivity and light and maybe some hope to the situation. Um, I want to talk about something which I believe every single human being will have experienced in their life at some point and maybe not paid any attention to and that's coincidence <clears throat> you know that thing when you're sitting there one day and somebody pops into mind you just have this idea of somebody and uh, like I did a few a few years ago I was sitting there thinking about an old friend from 20 years ago I don't know why I started thinking of Ted Ted Carey his name is and uh, wondered how he was remembered a few of the things that we used to do when we worked together and then just forgot it, left it there. A couple of days later I, I, I met my mum at Costa Coffee in Eastleigh, where, near to where I live. And we were sitting outside and I was absolutely gobsmacked because Ted Carey was walking down the road towards me. I was absolutely beside myself, I couldn't believe it. I ran up to him and he, he couldn't really remember me because I've changed. I had hair then. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's amazing. I was only thinking of you the other day, Ted. And I'd not thought of him for 20 years. There's another coincidence I had with a friend called Mark. He, um, he invited me to go fishing with him one day. And uh, I'm not a fisherman, but I said, OK, I'll go with you. <coughs> and um, so I turned up at his, uh, his fishing site, Romsey Lakes. And uh, he'd set a bivvy out. He was staying over the weekend, just camping overnight. and. He had four rods, two for him and two for me. I cast my rods out and we sat down in this beautiful vista enjoying the conversation, two of us having a fantastic conversation, enjoying the atmosphere, didn't catch a fish. After about three hours, Mark said to me, he says, do you fancy a cup of tea, Rog? I said, yes, please. So he said, I'd have to go get some water out of the van. So he went to the van to get some water and as he's gone, I was settled down in my chair and was just in absolute awe of the beautiful place where I was. And I'm looking at these little birds flying in and scooping off the water. A moorhen and her little ducks climbing up on the bank. <coughs> and Mark came back and he said, I'll put the kettle on, we'll re-bake the rods and throw them back out again. So we did. Cast the rods back out again. Now while I've been sat there, I was sitting there thinking, this is awesome. This is really awesome. I'd really like to catch a fish. Strange I haven't seen anybody catch a fish, but I'd really like to catch one. At least I'd like Mark to catch one or somebody to catch one so I can see a fish being caught. Mark made the cup of tea and come and sat down next to me. And within a few minutes, my rod started going off, the alarm on my rod. I couldn't believe it. I said, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And he said, pick your rod up, reel it in. So I reeled this fish in and caught an eight pound carp I was beside myself I thought, this is incredible this is amazing and I'm loving it carefully took the fish off the hook Mark said hold it at arm's length I'll get a picture and make it look bigger <laughs> so he put the fish back in the water and let it go and I said to Mark I said I don't believe this when you went to the van I was just thinking it'd be really great to catch a fish and now I've done it and he said I know it's crazy as I was walking to the van, I was thinking to myself, it'd be really nice if Rod could catch a fish. <clears throat> so my idea is about having a global coincidence. I know coincidence works, I know it works, because I have coincidences frequently and often. You know, whether it's uh, phoning somebody and somebody will say to me, God, Rod, I was just, I was just thinking of you or phone someone, they'll go, God, oh, I was just about to send a text to you. Or I think oh, I've got to go and get a car parking space in Eastleigh and it's a, it's a busy day, market day, and I need, a, I need to be in and out of the shop really quick. 
I need a car parking space right outside Oswald Bailey. I'm going to drive into along the road and just as I pull up, there's no parking spaces, and as I pull up outside the shop near enough where I want to be, the car pulls out and gives me a space. It's not always that accurate, and it doesn't happen every day, but they do happen. So I was thinking, I wonder if we could have a global coincidence where, you know, we can create a difference because I believe this is a spiritual war not just a war of information that we're in we're in a spiritual war <clears throat> and I define spirit for you back in the 90s I, I had to do a course to work in the North Sea and a firefighter firefighting course this guy lit a big tray of petrol he got a match and he threw the match into the petrol and the match went out I was quite surprised and he threw several matches into this petrol and each time the match went out and then he explained he said now watch this and he hovered a lit match just above the petrol and it lit suddenly this tray of petrol was on fire and he explained that it's the petroleum spirit that's caught fire it's the spirit which is explosive a tank full of fuel isn't really much of a problem but an empty tank full of vapour is. <coughs> and I got to thinking, well, what's spiritual about me then? <laughs> I don't believe in God, I don't believe in spirits. I've got no problem with people who do. I've got a lot of respect for people who are religious. But I come to the conclusion that um, the things that with me are unseen are my thoughts and my feelings and my emotions. So with my thoughts and my feelings and emotions, they're the things that happen before I have a coincidence. I'm thinking about something, there's a certain feeling generated, and then it happens in the world. When the unseen spirit, petrol vapour, you ignite it with a match, it becomes seen. When I have a coincidence, the unseen thought becomes seen in the world. It can't, it's not difficult. <laughs> you have a coincidence. If, you, if you're a human being and you haven't had a coincidence, then maybe I'm not looking. Because I know when I started noticing coincidences, they started happening all over the place. <coughs> Excuse me. People think I'm quite crazy. My, my boys think I'm a few. <laughs> my lift doesn't go to the top floor. I haven't got all the cups in the cupboard. They think I'm completely bonkers. But, um, and so did my mum. And I was explaining these coincidences to my mum one day. Because I've had some amazing things happen. And uh, she was laughing at me. She was with me one day when um, we was meeting my uh, middle son for a KFC. And I said, we're going to get a parking space right outside KFC. And it was a Saturday and we're driving down the road and looking at the line of cars parked and there was no spaces. But again, just as I pulled up, car put his reverse lights on, drove out and I drove in. I couldn't have got closer to KFC. My mum was originally laughing, saying, ah, ha, 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 you're not going to get a car space, and I did. She couldn't believe it, neither could I, to be honest with you, but yeah, we did, got a parking space. The following week, I visited my mum, she's 83, she's my stepmum, she's a beautiful lady, and uh, she said, Roger, well, you're not going to believe what's happened. And I said, what? She said, I was laying in bed the other night, thinking, singing the 21st Psalm in my head, and I'm like, yeah. And she says, and I went to sleep. When I woke up in the morning, the radio was playing. And it was playing on the radio. The 21st Psalm was playing on the radio. I thought, well, that's a good coincidence, isn't it? <coughs> so these coincidences work. They're not difficult. They're part of our innate ability as a human being. Are we creating these coincidences or are we sensing the future? I don't think I'm sensing the future. I think I'm creating the future. That's my, my way of looking at it because that gives me a little bit of power to control my life just a little bit. So all, all I think we do, if you want to join me in this experiment, we just need to sit there for a, a couple of minutes in the day and just calm down. Clear all this COVID-19, Bill Gates, <clears throat> clear the fight out of your head and imagine a future that you want as a person, an individual future. 
love, light, happiness, peace on earth. And think about it, try and develop a feeling of how it would be. And if you can't imagine how it would be, remember back to a time in your life when you were really happy and try and generate that feeling inside. And then just forget it. Carry on with your day. <coughs> try and do it two or three times a day. The more you can do it, the more chance you've got to get in a coincidence. But if we all do this, every single human being does this, uses your innate power to willfully intend to create a coincidence of a positive effect, I think it would work. We would change something in another dimension which will filter down into this dimension. I really believe that with all my heart. It isn't difficult. It's your innate ability as a human being. The Bible says things like, you know, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find. And I think maybe that's what he's talking about. I don't know. I'm not religious. I'm, I'm, I'm not a religious person. Spiritual person I am. And I define spirituality as my thoughts and my feelings. That's my spirituality, you know. Uh, crystals, great, but they don't float my boat. Anyway, I'm just a crazy lorry driver who's bald and uh, somewhat grey on my goatee beard. It's time to go and have a cup of coffee. I wish you all the best. My heart and my love goes out to the whole world at this time of, of disaster and tyranny. May we come together and pray, hope, face Mecca, whatever you need, but just pray for a coincidence that we can figure it out. We don't need to figure out in our minds what to do and how to get there. Just hold the thought of love, peace and happiness and what a world like that would be good and what it would be like. So uh, do today what others won't so you can do tomorrow what others can't and take care to get what you like otherwise you'll be forced to like what you get. All my love to every one of you. Thank you for being part of my life even though I don't know you. Bye.